All in all, this wheel is fantastic, especially in comparison to the Nant Fun wheel that we reviewed last time. I'll link the video down below to that, because these two wheels are technically direct competitors. <sighs> Hello, you dirty potters. How are you today? Every now and then, the VWAR company specifically contacts me to do a couple of reviews on their newer products, such as their ceramic art wheels. These are great because they're more economic. I call them economic because I think it's disrespectful to call them cheap, but they are relatively low cost and relatively low end in comparison to the more professional pottery wheels. But for you baby potters and beginning potters out there who don't have exactly 1200 and 1500 and $900 to spend on a wheel, this can be a great opportunity to get some practice in before you upgrade to the bigger stuff. Now, before we start this video, I do want to say that we are giving this wheel away today. The VWAR company is sponsoring this video. And because of that, they've allowed me to send this wheel off to someone else. Because realistically, I don't really need it. And every single time I do one of these videos, I end up giving them away anyway. All you have to do is like, comment, be subscribed with notifications on, and I will pick someone from the comments below to represent the channel and end up getting this wheel. I appreciate that you're watching my videos in the first place. I figure I might as well give something back to the community. On top of that, if I pin your comment, please contact me. If you don't contact me within a month, I'm gonna give it to one of my sexy patrons because they're the ones who make all of this happen. Secondly, my next store upload will be on this date. I'm probably gonna do a pre-holiday sale. I've already taken a lot of pictures of stuff and I haven't loaded them onto the website yet, but we, we definitely have some time to load them onto the website. It takes like a couple days to do it. And my description person will be happy to do them as well because I don't do the descriptions. Uh, one of my gorgeous, beautiful editors does, right? So giving her some work, she'll be happy for it. She loves doing that kind of stuff. She's a writer at heart. And if you don't read them, I will tell her and she'll be very sad. You better read them. September 1st, I'm also going to be at SAC Anime Summer if you want to come see me there. Everything is going to be super low priced because you don't have to pay for shipping. So I'm going to bring my stuff. I'm going to set it there. You come see me. You come get some stuff, you shake hands, kiss babies. Again, I will be at SAC Anime at the Anime Convention Center at this date with this stuff. And the final thing before we get on with this review is that I have a new artist on my team. This is her Instagram. Please go check her out. A lot of people have been asking, what's up with these little goat effigies of me? Have I become a furry? Who knows? No, I haven't. No matter what my Discord tells you, I have not become a furry. I don't know why they all live there. Her name is Dora. Her Instagram handle is Doraka with little spaces in between each door, space, ra, space, ka. And I've linked her stuff down below. Please go check her out. She's a fantastic artist. And we're probably going to be working with her in the future for a little bit of merch. Wink, wink. So go check her stuff out because she's the one who's been making all these little go effigies of me like this. Okay, on with the review. In today's video, we are reviewing the new Vivor model wheel. This one is similar to the other Vivor wheels that we reviewed. The difference is that this one has an LCD touch screen on the side of it, and I think it's trying to compete with some other companies that I did other reviews on, and they're like, no, 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 and we can't have that. And that's our dirty potter. So they sent us another wheel, and that's the one we're gonna be reviewing today. I've put the link to this specific wheel in the description below. It is at this price. It's fairly inexpensive for a lot of the beginner wheels on the market right now. Plus it comes with an LCD touch screen, and I know the last one did too, but this one's a bit higher quality as you will see sooner in the video. As soon as we get this new bad boy inside the door, we open it up and we immediately see the instructions on top. I think we're pretty familiar with the way wheels work by now, but the instructions are there just in case you want them specs along with it. Underneath that is two sets of tools. Usually whenever I get wheels like this and wheel reviews, they send one set of either the super sharp metal ones or they send the beginning pottery ones along with some kind of like plastic tools. This is the first time I've ever received a wheel with both sets in there. So the super sharp metal sculptor like ones and the beginner package of what you're gonna see most of the time whenever you buy a beginner set of pottery tools. It comes with the sponge, the pin tool, the metal rib, the knife, a cutting wire. It comes with all that stuff, a trim tool. This is perfect. I might be a little bit spoiled from doing so many of these reviews, but by this time, if a wheel doesn't come with one packet of these tools, I'm like, eh, no. No, I don't want it anymore. Wrapped up alongside the tools, you're also gonna find this red and yellow apron. I think that's really nice of them considering a lot of places are just gonna sell you the wheel and push you out the door, and they're gonna make you buy all the little stuff separately. This essentially kind of gives you all the little beginner tools that you would need if you're thinking about getting into the art form, which I appreciate. I, I don't like when I buy things sold separately. I don't wanna buy the wheel and then the fix to the wheel and then the tools and then a separate set of tools and then buy an apron 
and then have a grand total of a hundred something dollars when I could just buy the whole package for a hundred something dollars as it comes, which is what this package is. When we look at the size comparison here, it is kind of small, especially when we look at it in comparison to my wheel. My wheel is one of the older generational wheels before they started putting them in classrooms. So mine has these big long wings. You can put stuff on the side. There's no space to put stuff on the side unless you have a very, very tall bucket on the side of this. And even then it might be a bit unstable because this isn't a very heavy wheel. It's a smaller wheel that's meant for beginner potters who generally can't handle more than three or four pounds of clay at a time. We can also see this pretty clearly when you look at the height comparison. It's maximum two feet tall in comparison to my wheel, which is probably about two and a half, three feet tall. And that half an inch to an inch matters a lot. Trust me, it matters a lot. As we take the wheel out fully, we look at the foot pedal here. The foot pedal has these ridges on it to make sure that you don't lose grip as you put it down on the ground and have your foot placed on top of it. Much like a car pedal might have a little bit of grip, this too has a bit of grip. It is made of plastic, not a personal favorite of mine, but you are getting a more economic wheel. So it makes sense that it's made of plastic versus metal, which the higher end wheels would have. You also have the power here, which has a on and off switch. So not only do you need to push the power button on the wheel itself, you also need to make sure you push the green button on the power source once it's plugged in. As we take a look at the wheel itself and the wheel head, we see that it does have a splash pan. This is fantastic. I would almost never buy a wheel that doesn't have a splash pan. I personally don't use splash pans when I'm throwing. I use it when I'm trimming because I tend to fling trims everywhere, but I'm a relatively clean thrower. The splash pan is base. I would almost never buy a wheel that doesn't have its own fitted splash pan. It does have that segmented splash pan, the one that you have to take off two different parts and clasp them back together. So you do have ease of access when you take these apart, take them to the hose or the sink, clean them off, put them back on. It's super easy to clean because you can take them off. As we take a closer look at the wheel, we tip it upside down and we look at the bottom. This is fantastic. For any of you who have been watching these reviews very closely, we did a wheel review of a wheel called the Nant Fun wheel that I, uh, I wasn't that much of a fan of, to be honest with you. And the main reason was because the entire bottom, this part here, was just open. The components, the belt, the motor was just open. And as we work in a very clay and dust filled area, those were gonna jam and go out of style in like six months maximum. Considering beginners are not super clean throwers to begin with, they generally use more clay than necessary and more water than necessary and they're making messes as they experiment. I, I will not buy one of these wheels unless it has a bottom and this is a major point for me in that it does have a covered bottom. The motor's protected, all the components are protected. This is great in comparison to the Nant Fun wheel that also had an LCD screen but didn't have a closed bottom. Remember kids, close your bottom. Unless you're an adult, just do whatever. Looking at the bottom of the foot here, it does have these type of rubber grips on them. This is fantastic. You really want to make sure that you have a good grip on whatever table or surface that you're putting it on. And I like that it has tiny little grips on there just for a little bit of friction. One of the previous wheel reviews actually had a Vivor wheel that had extenders on it. And, and, I, and I didn't like this at all. The wheel itself is not big enough to sit on the ground and just have a normal stool for anyone but a child. And I think they tried to fix that problem by making leg extenders, but the leg extenders only went like five inches more. It didn't fix the problem whatsoever. We're looking, we're looking for feet here and you lose a little bit of stability because wheels like this are lighter than more professional wheels. So it brought up the center of gravity, which made it a little bit more difficult to center on when you put it on any surface, which you had to do because it's a smaller wheel. So the fact that it doesn't have those extenders is a plus for me personally. I don't like those extenders. I think it's a good idea in theory until you play with it a little more and you realize I didn't need these. As we plug it in and start playing with the wheel and the LCD screen itself, I want you to pay attention because this is a big point for accessibility here. When all the lights are blue, you can essentially push the plus or minus button to speed it up or slow it down, but it keeps going without facilitating any pressure from the foot pedal itself. So if you notice, if I push the foot pedal, when all the lights are blue, nothing happens. But as soon as I push the plus sign, it starts spinning around in a certain direction, which is fantastic for people who have accessibility issues. If you wanna try pottery and you're not exactly in a space where you can reach the foot pedal, we don't know what's going on with certain people and their situations. For people in that situation, this is a fantastic accessibility tool. On top of that, you can just push the hand adjustment button and you can start using the pedal freely as you want. You just gotta wait a second for it to switch the gears over and you can start using that pedal and it'll spin just like a normal wheel. On top of that, you can also press this button and it will change the direction of the wheel. So if you're left-handed, that's also a plus for left-handed accessibility. Generally speaking, a lot of the older wheels are made for right-handed people because the majority of the market are right-handed people. But for those of you who are left-handed, 
you're gonna love this immediately considering you can change the wheel direction whenever you want and a huge one a huge one and this is just the, the little things that really matter to me is that if i turn the wheel off in left-handed mode and then turn it back on in left-handed mode it stays in left-handed mode i if i was left-handed i'd be super irritated that the company didn't think about the fact that like i just want it to be i'm not gonna be right-handed when i wake up you know i want it to stay left-handed this is great i turn it on left-handed turn it off turn it back on it stayed on left-handed it was I, I would I would love this if I, if I was left-handed. I know I'm making a big deal out of it, and if you're right-handed, you're probably like, so what? No one cares. The left-handed people are shaking their heads furiously right now. Like, yes, thank you. I don't wake up right-handed. As we start throwing with the wheel, it's fantastic. It handles clay like a champ. I centered up to one, three, five, and seven pounds of clay. Granted, the seven pounds of clay did start to get a little bit hard, but that's not because the wheel itself couldn't handle the amount of power and pressure I was putting on the wheel itself. It was only because the wheel is kind of light in comparison to my wheel. So anything after about six pounds, it goes, okay, you're, you're gonna have to push a lot of pressure in order to center six pounds of clay at a time. And I weigh like 30 pounds maximum. So it's like trying to hitch a piggyback ride on a child. Like they only weigh a hundred pounds max. You, you probably weigh more than that, and it's not, it, you're gonna buckle that kid. Granted, if I'm being realistic, I don't think most beginners can handle and will make things out of more than six pounds of clay to begin with, if you're a baby potter or a beginner potter, because the high majority of the time, um, beginners are using too much clay to begin with to make a simple bowl. Even if they're making a very large bowl, it's still not six pounds of necessary clay. A big bowl for me is like three pounds, and that's like a huge fruit bowl. You know what I mean? But I know how to work the clay. I don't think beginners understand that they don't need that amount of clay. So I don't think that's much of a problem that it can't handle more than like seven pounds of clay. After playing with the wheel for about two weeks, I have a good list of pros and cons that I can give to you for this wheel specifically. Let's go over the pros and cons that I have found with this wheel. Number one, it's a fantastic wheel for the price. This is a giant pro. If you are a baby potter, which is what I call people who are underneath the beginning potter phase, then you would love this wheel. What often happens with a lot of people is that they get into the ceramic art field and they have a little bit of money to spend. They build up their garage, they finally build a wheel and a kiln, and they have no idea what they're doing. Sooner or later, they find out that it's a bit more difficult than they might expect, and they kind of abandon the project altogether. Which is great because other potters will take that equipment graciously, but at the same time, I think it's better that we not spend thousands of dollars on a what if I love it hobby, and just spend a good low price of about 160 plus shipping to see if we like the art form. I know there's a lot of you right now who are like, don't tell me what to do with my, you don't know me. But I also get a stream of messages almost every month and especially in my comments below every time I make this comment of people who are like, yeah, no, I tried it and I spent two Gs and you were right, sorry. I thought it was serene and easy and meditative like I thought when I saw the other potters do it on YouTube and TV and I thought it was easy peasy lemon squeezy when in fact it was difficult, difficult, lemon difficult a second huge pro for me is that it comes with its own set of tools i cannot tell you how much i love buying equipment that comes with other equipment that you're going to need further down the road anyway i hate buying equipment and they're like batteries not included this doesn't come with that you buy this entire one price set and it allows you to plug it in it gives you the tools it gives you a second set of tools in case you want to be a sculptor it gives you a small apron it's it's great i love that they set aside a little set of tools specifically for the baby potters out there who are experimenting with their artwork. If I was in that situation, I would be very gracious that they included this in the package. A little con here, or a pro, I'm not really sure which side you're on here, is that it's fairly small. This could be a good thing if you're trying to hide it away in a corner, you're trying to put it on a table, do a little project here, do a little side piece there. It's relatively small, you can hide it in the corner no problem. You can also lift it fairly easily. Its weight is a good thing for accessibility issues. If you're a little bit older or you have accessibility issues, physical issues, it can be very easily moved. It's it's no more than 30, 35 pounds. This for me personally, as a larger person who doesn't have those accessibility issues, is also a little bit of a con. You're either gonna have to put this up on a table, which means you're gonna have to size the table for your elbows because you're either gonna be throwing up here, which is gonna burn out your shoulders, or you're gonna be throwing way down here, which is not too comfortable for some people. You're gonna wanna find a nice middle ground to where you can just relax your elbows and throw with your hands directly below your chest, as most potters do. This is why when we sit down, we lean over a little bit, push pressure from our muscles, our back, our biceps, our chest, and we push down with our body weight. 
This doesn't let you really do the body weight thing that much without moving the wheel itself. Because the wheel is so short, you have to put it on something that is equally heavier and stable in order to center larger pieces of clay on it, which isn't really that much of an issue, you'll find out later in the video. Or you have to put it on cinder blocks, which I tried with one of these wheels. I went to Home Depot, bought a couple cinder blocks, put them in there to make it a little higher. It doesn't work. Because the wheel is so light, if you heighten the wheel at all, it changes the center of gravity. It lifts it up a little, which means if you're pushing on the clay body as you're centering, it pushes the super light wheel as well. So it doesn't really work to put it on cinder blocks. You essentially have to put this up somewhere if you don't want to sit down and throw on the ground. This brings me to the third pro. It's fantastic for kids. Like this is great for kids. This, I mean, if you're a fully grown adult like me, well, like me sometimes, then you're gonna have issues with this being so small. But if you're a child and you're thinking about getting this for a kid who's just getting into the art form and really wants to try it out, wants their own wheel, you get to give them this special Christmas gift this moment, then this is a great gift for them because anyone who's like maybe five, heck, maybe even three years old to like not eight or nine would love this. As I started looking at the wheel more, I know I have said this in other videos, but I'm gonna keep saying it until the company changes it. Stop putting these little ridges on the wheel. Somebody corrected me in the last video and said that's probably how it comes off of the production line and they most likely can't change it. That's not their decision. I don't care, take them off. These little textured lines on the wheel are not the norm for most ceramic wheels and ceramic artists. We hate this. We're very tactile, physical people. Usually, if, if you're really into the art form, you're probably a more physical three-dimensional artist. And so when you're throwing, you just feel these lines on the bottom of your palm, and you feel them on your fingertips. I hate it. Oh, I hate it. it. Gives me the ick, the icky icky. If they sold a higher end version of this that had a smoothed out wheel head, I would recommend that over this, 100%. Yeah, because if you have never worked with a more professional wheel before that has the smoothed out lines versus the super textured lines that the Vivor company and the Natfunk company also seem to have, you, you won't know until you have tried both. I went backwards, I tried the more professional wheel, and now that I'm dealing with these wheels, I'm like, why did they put these here? Later on learning that that's the way they come off the line. Smooth them out! Another big pro is that when we flip this thing over, all the components are covered. I know that this is a weird thing to mention because most of these types of lower end economic wheels have a covered bottom but I've been traumatized uh, from the Nantfun company. They have basically the same model of wheel that the Vivor company has, but the Vivor company did the gracious thing of covering the components. So the wheel is gonna last a lot longer than the Nantfun company wheel for relatively the same price that they sold. I know I didn't really use the word trauma correctly because that's, that's not what traumatizing something is, but I do have a very clear memory of, of being very angry <laughs> at the Nantfun company for being like, why would you just leave the wires open? We we work in a dust-filled environment. Those are gonna get ruined soon. Let's go on to the biggest pros that I found about this wheel, and that is the accessibility options that you have. You have easy accessibility for those who have lower limb disabilities or accessibility issues with their lower parts of their body. They can't exactly use foot pedals or something like that. And you also have the accessibility of having a left-handed button. These two are fantastic. The settings stay the same when you turn them on and off, which I, I cannot stress. Like imagine if you opened your phone that you might be watching this on right now and you had to put the settings back how you like them every time you open the phone. That's how annoying that is. This doesn't have that problem. If you put it on the left-handed setting or the foot pedal setting or the digital setting, it, it'll stay there. Also, not really a con, the LCD screen is just kind of cool. It's just kind of cool, man. It's just kind of cool. It's not touch screen. Actually, it, it is actually touch screen because if you touch it and it's a screen and it works, it's a touch screen, right? So yeah, it's technically touch. The one slight con that I have with the touch screen and the speed settings is that it didn't go below 60 and I don't know why. Uh, 60 is kind of fast for beginners, not gonna lie to you. I threw on this thing on the lowest setting when you see me throwing the brown clay. That is the lowest setting that I can go on and that was a bit too fast for me. The high majority of potters I don't want to say of my caliber, but as you get better at throwing, you don't necessarily value speed unless you're centering. You value consistency more so than speed. So you want everything to be nice and rhythmic and to be very set in a certain pace. This does that, but it only does it at a certain level. Uh, for example, my big wheel goes about maybe half the speed of the lowest setting of this wheel and sometimes it's a little bit too fast for me. I might be old or something, I don't know. I don't think that a lot of beginners would need to go that fast unless they're centering. 
and even then that is still the lowest setting. I would love it if they had a 30 setting or a 20 setting, but the lowest setting for their speed is 60, and that's that's kind of fast. All in all, this wheel is fantastic, especially in comparison to the NAND fun wheel that we reviewed last time. I'll link the video down below to that, because these two wheels are technically direct competitors. The only difference is that the Vivo wheel is a bit higher quality and has covered components, so I imagine it would last a much longer time. But other than that, it's essentially the same wheel, but more longevity. In fact, if I were to razor down this review, if you were to watch my other Vivor wheel reviews, this is essentially comparable to the other wheels that I've been reviewing. The only difference is that it has all these accessibility options with the LCD screen, and that's really just a leg up for people who need that, to be honest with you. On top of that, it's relatively the same price. And on top of that, something that I just found out is that when you buy this, you can choose different options for the amount of power that you choose to have on this wheel. So they have different wattages. Keep in mind, that when you look for a wheel, sometimes they will give you the speed option. I don't really care about the speed option. The speed option tells you how fast a wheel can go. It doesn't tell you how much power the wheel can give you. For me personally, if I center a large amount of clay, I wanna know the wheel's not gonna give back on me when I put a certain amount of pressure on it because it has so much torque or power to it. But if it goes fast, I don't really care. I don't really need my wheel to go fast. I need it to be powerful and consistent. And that's the option they're giving me here with the Vivor wheel. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. This has been a review on the Vivor wheel with the LCD touchscreen, the 10-inch model. I will put the link down below in the description for you. You should always be reading that anyway, to be honest with you. There's tons of goodies down there. Huge shout out once again to the Vivor company. They're fantastic. We are giving this wheel away just because of them today. Weirdly enough, um, I didn't know the Vivor company was a thing until I started to like do these reviews and now they're popping up everywhere and I, and I truly do mean everywhere they're on like my instagram and they're on my amazon thing and they're they're literally everywhere and they're not selling just pottery stuff they sell an array of stuff the pottery tools are just one segment of them and they sell fairly inexpensive tools that you might need in case you're a beginner in a certain craft or art form that about does it for the review thank you dirty potters for joining me today remember to put those comments down below and hit those buttons if you want to be entered in for the drawing and I will see you, Dirty Potters, next week. Thank you for your patronage. As always, as any good wheel would have, you do have the splash pan here. This makes sure that clay water and crap... <laughs> I said crap. <laughs> I could say crap. It's my channel, right?